Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is all about luxury that stands the test of time. I know this is always such a popular topic and you know, it's applicable to everything, but particularly when it comes to luxury goods, I think it's only natural to want items to last as long as possible, both in terms of quality, but also in terms of how classic the design is, just because they are so expensive. And this video was inspired by a Stella McCartney dress. I spotted this when I was browsing the new arrival section of My Teresa, and it instantly caught my eye. You know, I do love a good polka dot, so that was part of the reason, but I also remembered a very similar dress from her. So I Googled it and it is very similar to a dress she released in 2011, I think. I remember the dress because I remembered Kate Winslet wearing it and thinking she just looked unbelievably good. And it really struck me that good design really is timeless and it really does last. Even more out there design, if it is great design, it really can stand the test of time. So I thought I would do this video covering the three categories where I'm most happy to spend my money. And these are the categories where if I had to save everywhere else, this is where I would direct my money. And they are coats, bags, and shoes. I think you can get away with getting inexpensive sweaters and cheap scarves and all other accessories and clothing pieces, but if you're only splurging in three areas of your wardrobe, I really do think it makes sense to splurge on coats, bags, and then shoes as well. So within these categories, I'm gonna be pinpointing the styles that I really do see return year after year that I think are very timeless and I think would serve anyone's wardrobe very, very well. So I hope you guys enjoy this and let's get started. This video does continue on my partnership with my Teresa, who are really my go-to for all things luxury. I always say it, but their edit really is second to none. They do the most beautiful items, they present them in the most beautiful way, and I just absolutely love shopping from my Teresa. Everything that I'm featuring here today is available from myteresa.com, so I will link everything down below in the description section if you did want to check anything out. So first up, wrap coats, and I do think this is such a timeless style and for good reason. And even though it is kind of more similar to a tailored coat, I think it has a much easier elegance than a tailored coat. You know, it's a bit less formal and structured. It's a bit comfier to wear as well. I think often it feels like more of a nice cardigan rather than something really structured, but it still does look very, very smart if you get the right one. And I have a few wrap coats in my wardrobe, which I just absolutely love. And they are something I see come back every single year. You know, it is a very popular design. There are some brands who I do think do them exceptionally well. So my two go-tos here are Max Mara. I have one of their wrap coats myself and they are just beautiful quality and they 100% live up to the hype. They always have lovely fabrics, very nice neutral colorways, and they're always just so easy and elegant and chic and really have a kind of element of Italian glamour about them. I absolutely love Max Mara coats and while it's expensive, they are some that you'll have in your wardrobe for so many years. And then the other brand that stands out is Joseph. Joseph is a British brand, I believe, and they really carved out a niche themselves as a brand known for their quality and just really classic design. You know, you're not gonna see any neon or kind of crazy patterns or anything like that. They do very, very pared back neutrals, which just never look out of style. They're always very minimal, but chic and elegant, and they do just the most beautiful, beautiful pieces. So if you're looking to invest in a beautiful wrap coat, I would definitely recommend looking at either Max Mara or Joseph. They both do the most stunning items. When it comes to tailored items, there are a few different avenues you can go down and that's the beauty of kind of good tailoring and good cuts. It can really mold your personal style. So if you do like items which are a bit less kind of super feminine and girly, then a straight tailored jacket will work really, really well and will last you decades if you treat it right. I always think Stella McCartney does beautiful tailoring and her pieces can be very feminine, but they can also be just very, very sharp looking and a little bit masculine 
but not too much. And I think her tailoring always just looks absolutely incredible. And that's everything from her suiting right through to her really beautiful coats. Even those with a slightly softer edge as well, I think look beautiful and just totally timeless. If you're looking for something a little bit more on the feminine side, then I would always pay attention to the details of a coat because the standard cut of a coat really isn't going to deviate too much if you get a well-fitting one, that is. Um, but it's the details that really kind of make a difference in terms of the style. So a lady coat, for example, is bound to have much more rounded edges. So instead of a really sharp collar, you're looking at a much softer, rounded collar. Gucci do a beautiful one at the moment, and they actually do really beautiful tailoring. I know a lot of people focus in on their accessories but their clothing is very, very lovely and very classic looking. Their lady coat is just the thing of dreams. It's so elegant and lovely and just looks like it's cut to perfection. But a lady coat is always a really good one to look at if you did want something just a little bit more dainty and elegant for every day. And then finally for my category of coats is the puffer coat. I think that if you were gonna save on one type of coat, it would be more likely to be the puffer coat just because the cut and the fit aren't as important when it comes to a puffer coat. You know, you can see less of your shape in something a little bit more bulky. But if you did wanna invest in something that's gonna last you for ages, then Canada Goose is a great option. I have mine from there and it's just incredibly warm and comfortable. And they also come with a lifetime guarantee. And I think that's the biggest difference when it comes to puffer coats and jackets. You know, yes, you're probably not getting that much more in terms of the specific fit but you really are getting that quality in terms of the warmth and also a lifetime guarantee if they do provide it. I also have a coat from Montclair as well. My preference is with Canada Goose. I think that the quality is just a little bit different from what I've seen of the two that I have. Um, but yeah, if you did want to go for something a little bit more fancy in the puffer jacket category, then Canada Goose would always be my go-to. Next up are bags and I think if there's one overriding kind of factor when it comes to a classic bag which will see you through decades, not just years but decades, it's going to be logos and leather. Those are the two kind of guiding principles for me um, and you know fashions come and go, um, leather is always the consistent factor you know and that may change when we look at more sustainable options um, but certainly for as long as I've been following bags leather has always been the main main theme and then logos as well and I feel like lots of people have really strong opinions about logos and I'm not talking about kind of big massive logos everywhere and logos can evolve a lot too but overwhelmingly when you look at the bags that have really stood the test of time usually they will involve quite a distinctive looking logo because logos are popular and they do sell quite well. Even when you're thinking of, you know, the massive brands like Chanel and Louis Vuitton, they have very distinctive logos and prints which have been around for ages. And even other brands like Saint Laurent, you know, one of the reasons why they have done so well is because that they've kept their logo consistent. So if you're really trying to identify what is going to be classic and what is going to last, for me, the two kind of starting points are always whether it has a very consistent, very classic logo and also whether it's made of leather. But obviously Obviously bags come in many shapes and sizes and for me there are four kind of clear winners in terms of classic shapes that really do return year after year that over my 15 years of following fashion these are just the constant ones that I see come back all the time. So the first one and I think probably maybe the most popular maybe tied with second place um, is the shoulder bag. Everything from the classic Chanel flat right through to the Saint Laurent Lulu that we're seeing now you know it's a very simple classic classic design, it's very wearable, it's very elegant, and it just always, always returns in many different forms, but it definitely always returns. Second, and this is maybe tied for first, is also the top handle. And this is the original kind of handbag. And even looking through kind of, you know, historical fashion, this is what you'll see the most, you know, a very dainty, delicate handbag, which is now morphed into usually slightly larger styles, but always in the form of that top handle. And then the other two styles are the tote bag and the camera bag. And these have come about a bit more recently, I think. And it really is, I think, due to the changing way women are navigating their way through the world. You know, it used to be that women didn't work, so all they had to do was carry around little handbags. But now women do work, so we need tote bags. We need functional things to carry our items. So tote bags are always a popular one now. And then also camera bags where you do want to be fuss-free. You know, you want to be hands-free because 
because you may be carrying your baby and carrying shopping and all those other things. Um, so newer, but definitely very solid, consistent categories are tote bags and camera bags. In terms of brands for each category, I do have my personal favorites, but these very much are my personal favorites rather than the definitive list. Um, for shoulder bags, no surprise here, but Saint Laurent has been my new favorite. I think their designs are so beautiful. And here, of course, I'm excluding, you know, the usual suspects of Chanel, Louis Vuitton, and Hermes, because I feel like those are in a slightly different category by themselves. Um, but in terms of shoulder bags that I love, Saint Laurent is just the one for me. I love their design, I love their quality, and I love their function. I have my Lulu now in a few different iterations and it just never really disappoints and I just think it's a wonderful, wonderful bag. So Saint Laurent is my personal choice. There are many other options out there obviously, but I love Saint Laurent for all the reasons I just mentioned. And I do think it is a very, very classic design. For the camera bag style, I do think that the Gucci Soho is pretty difficult to replace. And there are many brands that do camera bags. I know Valentino do their studded one. And I really like the Saint Laurent larger one as well. Um, but I think the Gucci Soho is just kind of in a league of its own. You know, it's really stood the test of time. It's been around for many, many years now. And I think it's just a great style. I did sell mine um, just because I don't love the camera bag on me in terms of the actual style, but if you are looking for one, I'd still recommend the Gucci Soho. I still think it looks great. And it's popular for a reason because it has great design, but again, it's very functional and very, very comfortable to wear. In terms of tote bags, one of my favorites is still the Valentino tote bag. I think it is so beautiful and luxurious and it's not necessarily the most kind of crazy hard wearing. So if you are really hard on your bags, then maybe it's not the one. But if you are medium hard on your bags, then I do think it still stands up very well. I know I definitely don't baby my tote bags and it still looks great. I did pop in a bag shaper, which I do think is important for that style. It has very, very soft kind of smushy grain leather, but I just love this bag so much. I think it looks great. And you know, I don't love the rock studs on every single Valentino bag, but I really think it works on the tote style. They do them in beautiful colors and I just think is the perfect combination of a very classic style with a little bit of an edgy design as well. And then finally you have the top handle, which is the design that started all and pretty much every fashion house out there does a version of this. And you have the very new versions from brands like Off-White, and then you have the very traditional versions from brands like Dior with the Lady Dior. You know, you can really have the full spectrum from very, very trendy and new right through to super classic and have been around for decades. For me, one of my favorites, which I think strikes a nice balance between looking very kind of modern, but also still being around long enough that you know it's very classic, are Prada top handles. And my love for Prada top handles probably began when I started watching rom-coms because often they would be featured in films. And then I watched Scandal and Olivia Pope had all of the Prada bags and my love for them just kind of continued. But I do think they are a beautiful style. They are very elegant, very timeless, they're functional as well and I just think they are a gorgeous gorgeous bag which if you do like your top handles is definitely a great buy. And then finally I have shoes and for me shoes can be easily split into three categories where I'm most happy to spend the most money and um, so they are boots, they are pumps as in high heels and then there are flats. There are obviously other types of shoes but those are the areas where I'm most happy to spend my money. I obviously still wear sneakers and sandals but I'm less happy to spend my money there just because I don't think it represents as good value for money for me personally because I don't wear them quite as much. Um, so so boots are first and boots are for me always a better buy when you get them in a longer length, especially in terms of spending money. So I'm happy to get kind of less expensive versions in an ankle boot, but when it comes to spending a decent amount of money, I would always rather go for a knee high boot. I get more wear out of them. For me, autumn is kind of the best time to wear ankle boots and autumn doesn't really last that long in the UK. You know, it seems to go a little bit into autumn and then straight into winter and it just gets cold very quickly. So when it does get cold, I would always rather have a kind of complete knee high boot. And whether you go for something kind of over the knee or at the knee, 
I think that's more down to personal preference, but there is a very particular style of boot and I was browsing the boot selection on my Teresa and there is a very, very consistent style, which is kind of that riding boot style. You know, it goes to the knee, usually in brown or black, and it's just a very, very classic silhouette. And so many brands do these from Todd's to Valentino to Jimmy Choo. You know, it's a very, very popular design and that's for good reason. It lasts, you know, it's something that you could have bought 10 years ago and you'd still be wearing today and it still just looks just as classic and just as appropriate. Next up are pumps and for me the classic pump is just the best high heel to invest in. I own them in so many different colors and varieties because they are so simple to pair, it really is a no-brainer and they are the most flattering on your foot, you know. Straps and bells and whistles are great but if you're looking for something that's going to be flattering I don't think you can do better than a great pump and all the major brands do them from Manolo Blahnik to Jimmy Choo to Jean Vita Rossi. I own all the kind of major brand ones from the Romy style from Jimmy Choo to the Manolo Blahnik BB and then also the Jean Vita Rossi's and I can say for me Jean Vita Rossi just wipes the floor with them all. They are by far the most comfortable pumps I own. I have them in lilac, in black and in pink now because they are so comfortable. I particularly like the suede because they are a bit more malleable. They do soften to your feet making it a much more comfortable experience but this is not only a stunning design and just looks so classic and so great with every kind of outfit but they are also much more comfortable than their competitors I think. So for me it's all about the Jean Vita Rossi heels. I just don't think you can do better. It is such a beautiful classic style. And then finally I have flats and I don't know about you guys but I often find it more difficult to find a good comfortable pair of designer flats than I do a pair of heels. I don't know why that is um, but I always think that flats can kind of be divvied up into two categories. So there is the loafer type shoe and then there is the more kind of pointed flat or ballet flat. For loafers there are so many brands that do these but I think the most quintessential classic style is from Todd's. They've been doing these for I think it is literally decades now. It's a very very classic style you know it's very very famous at this point and they do so many beautiful versions but they are a little bit more I guess kind of bulky on the foot so if you wanted something a little bit more streamlined I did see a new brand and I have no idea how to say it so I will just pop it up on screen but I saw this loafer and I just thought it looked so incredibly beautiful. They really remind me of the Nicholas Kirkwood Bayer Flats just slightly less extreme in the shape and I thought these were absolutely beautiful. So definitely a lot of options when it comes to loafers. My personal preference is always for the simple pointed flat though. I find it the easiest to wear and by far the most flattering and every brand does these right through from Jimmy Choo to Valentino. I used to own the Valentino ones and even though I really love the look my feet did not get along with them. I didn't find them particularly comfortable. New on my wish list though are the Aqua Zero Flats. I love this design so much and they kind of have that signature bow on a few of their different styles. On the flats though, I think they are stunning. I love the cutout effect. I've seen them in the kind of mock rock print with the beautiful blush color and I'm just obsessed with these. So these are definitely on my wish list, but regardless of what brand you go for, I don't think you can go wrong with this kind of flat. As I said, from personal experience, I always find the pointer shoe to be the most flattering and just easy to slip on and go. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. As promised, I will leave links to everything I featured in the description section below. If you have any questions for me then leave me a comment and as always thank you so much for watching I will see you in my next one bye guys